booktube it's kim at middle of the book march and this is my bookish week my pissed off bookish week for saturday october 8th yes i had a great week but there's something i am really pissed off about and you'll hear about that in a little bit but one of the best parts of my bookish week is that i got to get together with heidi from my reading life uh heidi and i live about six hours or so away from each other but she and her husband were coming south for a weekend and uh, she said, hey, why don't we see if we can get together? And we had been planning on getting together at um, a bookstore and with a bar inside of it that I have been to before. And we ended up not being able to do that because somebody had a cold. I'm not going to reveal any names, but we didn't want to meet in such a small congested place. So we ended up meeting on the beach. And it was a little bit of a rainy day, but we did it anyway. And I have a couple of pictures. We ate beach pizza. I introduced Heidi and her husband to beach pizza, which is basically a flat piece of cardboard with really sweet uh, sauce, a couple of sprinkles of cheese. And then if you have to ask for melted cheese because they slap a piece of provolone on the top of it to be extra cheese. And that's the pizza that you get. <laughs> it's my favorite it hasn't changed since my childhood. It's decades and decades I've been eating beach pizza. So I don't know if they were lying to me or not, but I certainly enjoyed it. And then our other goal was to get fried dough. However, it was kind of a rainy, breezy day, kind of cool. And the fried dough places were closed. So this shot is of us pouting because we could not get fried dough at Happy's Fried Dough, the best on the beach. So Heidi's husband bought us both cannolis to make up for it. <laughs> but I had such a blast meeting them and talking and we, we chatted and laughed and talked about books and life and all kinds of stuff. And we were only, be, we were only able to spend a, a little bit of time together, but uh, it was awesome. And I hope that Heidi and I can get together Again, to, you know, maybe go out and have a meal and go book shopping and hang out and whatever. It was just a blast and I loved it. So again, I say the best part of BookTube is meeting up with your friends that you've been talking with. You know, I've been on BookTube almost three years and, you know, we've been talking for so long. And I met Karen Evans over the summer of the Rov of Roving Reader. And I have another book group meetup coming at the end of the month. I'm not going to reveal that yet. Um, but I cannot wait. I am so excited. So that was, it was a blast. Now, let me tell you about the bookish part of my week. Oh, and after Heidi and her husband continued on their trip, I stopped in a bookstore and I did buy five books, but I'm going to show you those in a different video. I'm, I've got a book haul video coming up. But let me tell you about the books I read and what the bookish things that are going on this week. I finished two books, and the first one is I Know Who You Are by Alice Feeney. This is one of Feeney's backlisted books. And I have read Sometimes I Lie, which I loved. And then I read Rock, Paper, Scissors, which I also loved. And then I have this book, and I have another backlist title, His and Hers, uh, that I have to read. And I... Her next book is Daisy Darker that I will read. I am actually a, a pretty good sized Alice Feeney fan. However, this book was messy. <laughs> Alice Feeney is a thriller mystery author. Um, she is a uh, British author based in the UK. And so I, I've i really enjoyed her writing. I really enjoyed her books, but this one was kind of mixed up and messy. This is her second book. Um, it's the story of what is her name? It's the story of Amy Sinclair, and she is an actress, and she's just kind of graduating into the A-listers. And so everybody realizes who she is and knows her by sight. And it's the story of her life in London with her husband. And one day, her husband just disappears into thin air. His keys, his wallet, his shoes are left at their home. She cannot figure out what's happening. She is distraught. She is just confused and scared. And it goes from there. There's other kind of wrinkles in her her background and her story. She has had a stalker in the past. She feels like somebody's following her. 
she you know from the way she's talking within the text that she has a she has a past and some baggage but we're not quite sure what that is yet um she has no family left her she she and her husband got together very quickly and married quickly and they both seem to not have any family no background nobody left living so it was just the two of them um and she, the day, the night she realizes her husband is missing, she, of course, uh, talks to the police. And now the police are involved and they start investigating. And there's a lot of questions. They have a lot of questions for Amy. And she starts to unravel a little bit. And we notice that as the reader, we notice that she's unraveling. So I start to wonder, is she an unreliable narrator? Was she involved in some way? What's going on? Now, the, the book bounces between two timelines, when Amy was a child and now in her present as an adult, uh, dealing with her missing husband. And so we get to see how she became who she is, how she grew up, what her family life was like. Um, she lost her mother in childbirth, so it was just an older brother and their father. And after her mother died in childbirth, birth, the father kind of fell apart and uh, started drinking and um, it wasn't a very happy childhood. It wasn't a very uh, secure and nurturing environment. So we definitely know that Amy has baggage. So one of Alice Feeney's strengths has always been writing the story and then somewhere in the middle of the book there's a major turnaround that makes you like what just happened? And I ask that in every single Alice Feeney book that I've read so far. There's always something in the middle. It's like, wait a minute. What what did I just read? And that, then you have to, my gears are turning to try to real, remember, what did I read up until that point that got the book to this point? And then the, the second half of the book kind of clears it up and wraps everything up. And I think she tried to do that in this book, but it, it was messy. There was a lot of holes that should not have been there. There was a lot of questions like, why is that important? Uh, why is that doesn't make a lot of sense? That wouldn't happen. Those types of issues. And at the end of the book, it was like, I don't think so. <laughs> it was an interesting wrap up, but I didn't really enjoy it. And it's, it was, it was like, mm, no, very cringy. And I just, no, no, didn't make sense. It made sense, but it's like, and eh, I don't like that. I don't like that how it ended. But it's definitely worth a try. It's an, it's a thriller. It's an Alice Feeney. She's she's a very good writer. I really like how she does that. But this one was not the best. So I had finished a second book this past week, and now here I am going to talk about why I'm pissed off. And <laughs> if anybody has follows me on Goodreads, you know that I just finished this book. I. I'm filming this on Friday. I just finished this book last night, and this is my latest five-star book. Um, this is The Trees by Percival Everett. It's uh, it's shortlisted for the Booker Prize, which um, the results are coming up soon. And it's all over BookTube. This book is everywhere. Uh, a lot of people read the um, prize list. A lot of people read the Booker shortlist. I'm not a prize list reader. If there are books that come up on a prize list, I will pick them up if I'm truly interested. And this one just got to me because I saw it everywhere. I had the chance to buy it at a at a discount, and I did. I actually bought it on my Kindle for $3.99. I started reading it on my Kindle and very quickly realized I need the physical copy on my shelf because I knew right in the very beginning this was going to be a five-star book for me. This is the story of um, a set of murders that happens in Money, Mississippi. Now, Money, Mississippi is a real place in Mississippi. And that is the setting or the location of the murder and brutalization of Emmett Till in, I believe, 1954. I, I will correct that in a text here if I'm wrong. Um, if you are unfamiliar with what happened to Emmett Till, he was a teenage boy who was accused by a group of white Southerners who uh, I'm, I believe were suspected of being part of the Ku Klux Klan. And he was accused of engaging or accosting a white woman. And so he was um, kidnapped, 
brutalized, beaten beyond recognition, lynched, and killed. Um, at For his funeral, his mother insisted on leaving an open casket because she wanted to show the results of white people's brutality, of racist white southern, southerners' brutality. And unfortunately, you can find these pictures online because they are um, gruesome to look at. It's unfortunate, but in my opinion, it's part of history and we should realize what really happened. Uh, the pictures of him in his open casket uh, look unrecognizable as Emmett Till, but they also at times look unrecognizable as a human. And his mother insisted on that. So we have that legacy to learn from and we have that American history that we should be well aware of. So The Trees is a novel um, which centers around the murder of Emmett Till. And there are two uh, Mississippi, money Mississippi residents who are found uh, brutally murdered and gruesomely murdered, gruesome murder scenes. Um, and along with their dead bodies is found the dead body of a younger or a smaller black man. But come to find out, the black man was already dead. It wasn't that he was killed on the site. And so the the police are dumbfounded. The um, Mississippi Bureau of Investigations is brought in. Uh, eventually the FBI is involved because, because around the country, all of a sudden there are additional murders with the exact same events that happened and the, and the same types of killing. And so word is getting out around the country. There are um, links to all of the white people that are found murdered. Eventually, very quickly, we realized that uh, there were some uh, Klan members in the murdered white people's uh, backgrounds in their family. And it's almost as if the murders were happening because of retribution. And so there's so many questions going around about how this is happening. When is when and where is this going to happen again? Uh, there's so much commentary about race and race wars, not just race riots, but wars. Uh, the the atmosphere of being in one of the most racist states in the United States, which is Mississippi, that's proven statistically. Um, I'm not just making that up, but it is a statistic. And in the 50s and in the days when Emmett Till was murdered, it was uh, far worse, far, far worse. But the irony in this book is Everett's writing is freaking fantastic. It's just, this book is phenomenal. It's hilarious and barbaric all at the same time. He, he names his characters with these somewhat goofy names but it made me laugh when I finally, there's some names that he put together that I'm like, oh, I get it now. And it was funny, very funny. But it's almost as if this is a Southern Gothic humor horror mashup. And it does not read like a typical murder mystery plot. So if you start to read it and you're expecting a murder mystery that gets solved and gets wrapped up at the end, it's not that type of a book. The writing... I I already I'm going to repeat myself. The writing is so masterful and so fluid and just it it pulled me in immediately and I read this book in two nights and not all night. It was just a few hours that I finished this book. Um I couldn't help myself. Now there's I don't want to I'm not going to give this away, but on this particular version, this American version of the cover, the, the British cover looks different. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that, but embedded in the cover of this book and on the back, there are names. These are all, if you can, I don't know if you can see that. Those are all names. And I'm not going to tell you why they're there, but it's important to the story. Um, here's why I'm pissed off. This book is incredible but I had no idea who Percival Everett was. I had no idea until he was on, voted for the Booker shortlist, who he was. I thought this was kind of a debut novel. This man has written 22 novels, 30 books, 32 books altogether. 
he also is an artist. His paintings are gorgeous and uh, very revealing and poignant. And I'll try to, I'm going to try to put some photos of some of his artwork here. But the, I was, I'm so pissed off that I have never heard of him. Why have I never heard of this man who is 10 years older than me and has written 30 books? Why have I never heard of another one of his novels? Who do I have to blame for that? Is it my fault as a reader? I am not a naive reader. I am not a reader consuming all kinds of Pulp Fiction or James Patterson or Danielle Steele. And I'm not, I'm not guilting anybody or trying to criticize anybody, but I'm not that kind of a reader. I don't stick to one genre. I read all kinds of things. I have never heard of Everett. Should I blame myself? Should I have investigated more to find great books like this? Should I have looked more deeply into books written by Black authors? Should I have read more books into uh, racism in the United States? So if I want to say yes to all those, who else do I have to blame? Do I have to blame the publishing industry for not bringing Percival Everett more to the forefront? Why did I never hear about him? Why were his books not really assigned in college writing classes? Were they only in African American studies classes? And why do African American studies, quote unquote, have to be segregated into their own class? Why was the story of Emmett Till not in, in, taught to me in high school? Why was the history of Jim Crow and the history of racism in the United States, aside from the Civil Rights Movement, which was a blip in my American history education, why was that not stressed more? Why is it so uncomfortable for a book of this tone and this point and this importance, why is it always covered over? Why is it always inconspicuously sitting on a shelf somewhere. Why did I not know Percival Everett's name? Why have I never read one of his books? So who am I pissed off at? I don't know, myself in some, po in, in some sense, the publishing industry, my educational system. I'm, I'm just pissed off in general. So this book was so phenomenal. At, in the very beginning of October, I'm going to give you a spoiler. This will this is my book of the year. There will have to be something incredibly stupendous in the next three months to knock this out of its position. Um, I urge everybody to read this book. I've already seen so many phenomenal reviews of it on BookTube. Uh, I can't stress it enough. This is a difficult read. There's a lot of language. There's a lot of description. There's a lot. Um, it's it's pretty gruesome. There's some horror elements to it, but it is also hilarious. It is expertly written. The dialogue is funny and fantastic. The names are ironic and goofy. It's one of the best satires or satirical novels I have read in years. It's phenomenal. So I urge you and I encourage you to read this, pick it up, buy it. Um, look into Percival Everett. I, I, I'm I going to put all of his titles in my description box below, and I will also remind you to go online and look for his art. It is beautiful. So I'm going to work on myself to calm myself down and not be so pissed off at all of those, in all the ways I can be pissed off, but you know what I mean. So that's it for what I finished. What am I currently reading very quickly? Britta and I are making our way through The Long Gaze Back, edited by Sinead Gleason, and this is um, Irish women's short stories. And they are arranged chronologically, so the oldest starts off the book and the, the newest ends the book. So far, we've read 10 stories, and um, it's, it's great. I am not a short story fan, but I'm really enjoying myself with that book. And in honor of Victober, I'm reading David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. I told myself I would read this in order to get ready for Barbara Kingsolver's novel, Demon Copperhead. And so I've never read David, David Copperfield. I wanted to pick up a Dickens, so this is the one. And I'm slowly making my way through that one. I'm hoping I'll finish it in a month. It's a big one, so I'm not sure. But um, I'm going to do my best. That's it for me. Uh... 
I hope you, I hope, if you're a booktuber, I hope you get a chance to meet some other booktubers in person. And it's just so much fun to do it. Thank you, Heidi and Eddie, for buying me cannolis and for sitting in the rain and dealing with a cold and all of that. We just, I, I loved it so much. I had so much fun with you guys. So thanks for watching. Write me a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.